Okay, guys, no more Mr. Nice Guy. We've been letting these users use our app this whole entire time, and we need that email right now. How are we going to get it? We're going to get it with identity via JWT. Now, you may be asking yourself, I probably, probably heard of JWT, but how does it actually work? Well, first of all, the user is going to log in with an email and a password, we are going to issue them a JWT, which is basically a fancy little string of words that will go between them and the server. Each time that they utilize the server, it's going to validate the JWT. But we can't stop there. The JWT also has a couple things that you should know about. As a header, it has a payload, and within this JWT, you can see that there are little dots, and each separate little dot represents a different part of the JWT. And within it, you have the header, you have the payload, you have the secret, and it's all encrypted by a secret that is contained within the token. That's pretty much it. But we need to do a couple installs. So let's go ahead, let's hop inside VS Code, and let's install these packages. Okay, so we are inside of Visual Studio Code. I am in .NET 8, so whichever version that you are in, what you want to do is you want to go to Open NuGet Gallery. We're going to type in Identity. It's got a pretty good search fun. It's got pretty good search functionality for NuGet Gallery. So I'm just going to go ahead and search for Identity Core, and you want the one that's Microsoft Extensions Identity Core because it's got all the nice little things that we want and it will install identity with it as well so remember ma make sure that you match it up then what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and then we're going to type in entity framework core and make sure got the right version then the next thing that you want to do is type in jwt bearer bearer and go ahead and install that one and you want core authentication jwt bearer Okay, so that's looking good. So the first thing that we're going to add is a model for our user. If you think about it, we are modeling stocks. We are modeling comments, but we also need to hold data for our users. And thankfully for us, Identity provides us with this Identity user class that's gonna go ahead and set up things like password, email, but also give us the ability to extend it later on. So you all you get access to password, you get access to email, but if you wanna extend it and maybe add like a bio, or maybe you have some type of stock specific property that's specific to users, I don't know, maybe you wanna add their user risk to the user, you can also extend it as well. So you get the best of both worlds. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to create it. So we're gonna go into here, we're going to add a new C sharp file and we're going to call this app user. This is going to be our version. This is going to be the extension of the identity user, which we are going to actually inherit from. And when you inherit it, you're going to get, like I said, you're gonna get access to all of the defaults, but you're also going to be able to add things like your own, like int, risk, some type of specific thing that's specific only to your users. But I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this. I'm just gonna go ahead and make everything default. And silently behind the scenes, identity user is going to be adding things like the password and the password confirmation. And you won't see it, but it's actually tucked away within the actual identity user. So now that we've actually created our app user and we've actually got a model for our user, the next thing that we need to do is we need to let the application DB context know that we, we are now using identity. And when we do this, we're not going to actually add the app user to the D DB context because we're going to let this thing called identity DB context take care of that for us. And when we do that, all we need to do is go inside of our application DB context. And instead of having just the DB context right here, what we are going to have is we're going to have, you guessed it, identity DB context. And we're also going to pass in our app user to let identity DB know that this is the user object that we are going to have and to plug this into our identity. So now that we have our user set up and now that we have our application DB set up, 
we need to hook them up to the program.cs file. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna add the identity, then we're gonna add an entity framework store, which is going to hook up our application DB context. And it's gonna be pretty easy, but we also have some settings that we want to add as well too. And the way that we're gonna do that, we're going inside of our program.cs, just like I said, and we're going to add to our builder.services. So let's go under our used SQL, and this is where I'm going to add it. And first one I'm going to do is builder.services, and I'm going to add the identity. And this is where we get all of our nice extensions. So first thing I'm gonna do, add app user, then I'm going to add the identity role. And the reason that we're going to use identity role is that there's really no reason in our app to extend the roles. You could easily extend the roles that you, that you, uh, you can easily extend the roles, but you don't have to as well too. And you don't even have to extend the app user, but I think in our case, we definitely want to extend the app user because we're going to have some more advanced functionality. So I'm gonna go options, go down here, go ahead, add the semicolon. I'm gonna go options.password.require digit so we're gonna have we're going to require numbers within our password and feel free to make these as uh strict or as lax if you want to if you want to add more if you want to add more restrictions so that they have to set up a very secure password feel free to do so but I'm going to just go through here and add all the usual suspects so require lowercase we're going to set that to true then same exact thing so let me go down here i'm going to go options password and i am also going to require an uppercase so require uppercase is equal to true now i'm going to go down here and i'm going to go password and require non-alphanumeric so we'll set that to true and let's see one more uh we're going to have a required length so password dot required length and we're going to set this to 12. Okay, so that is looking good. Next thing that we want to do is just like I said, next thing that we want to do is we want to go down and we want to add the entity framework store. So entity framework stores, and we're gonna go ahead and toss in our application DB context. Let's go into here, application DB context, and go ahead and add a colon to that. So now we need to make our schemes. And schemes is kind of a funny sending word, but it basically means, are you gonna add JWT? Are you going to add cookies? Or are you going to add a mixture of both? And because we're not using cookies, we are just using straight JWT, we are going to set our scheme up in order to have JWT. So let's go ahead inside of our app here, and I'm gonna go ahead go below the add entity framework stores. And then here is where I'm going to add the scheme. And the way that you add the scheme is pretty simple. You go builder.services. So we'll say builder services dot add authentication. And we're going to go options arrow, go down. I'm going to go ahead and add the colon. And also I am going to add the a, add JWT beer. So we'll go add JWT beer and we'll leave this alone for now and i'm going to fill out the ad authentication so the way that you felt the ad, ad authentication is um there's many ways that, that you could do it but i'm going to show you the most explicit you could just make everything default and a lot of people do do that but i think it is good to just to go into here and have a lot of these settings filled out in case you want to change them because you probably a pretty good chance that you will so what I'm going to do, and if this doesn't make sense for right now, just kind of follow along and I'll show you what I'm going to be doing at the end. So we'll go de default four bid scheme. I'm going to go options dot default scheme. I like this scheme. <laughs> we're saying the word schemes a lot. Uh, default sign in. So we're going to go default sign in scheme. So default sign in scheme just like this. And then at the very end, we're gonna do our default sign out scheme. So options.default sign out scheme. And then here's where we're going to add the default. So just say JWT bear defaults. And we're gonna say authentication scheme. And this is going to set all of our defaults for us. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to add our JWT. And the way that you add JWT, so first thing, I'm just going to go up here, kind of 
make everything look nice. I'm going to go options. Go ahead. And here's where we're going to add the token validation parameters. So we'll say options token validation parameters and token validation parameters comes with the JWT bear uh, package. So you got to make sure that you have that installed. So here we're going to say validate issuer. So validate issuer, we're going to say true. Of course, then we're going to say valid issuer. Then we're going to say builder dot configuration. And we're going to have to set our app settings. So configuration, and we will have an array here, and this is going to be JWT issuer. But we haven't made this yet, so we need to go actually make this within our app settings. And what you want to do is go beneath the allowed host, just like this. And we're gonna say JWT, so JWT, and we're gonna have an object. And within this object, we're going to have an issuer, we're going to have a audience, and we're going to have a signing key. And the issuer and the audience, just to be real with you, aren't really that important right now. This will be important when you actually deploy it. And the issuer and the the issuer is basically the server, and the audience is whoever the users, whoever is using the app. And it's kind of strange, funky language, but it is kind of what it is. So we're gonna go into here localhost and we're going to go five two four six again and the this is when things kind of get important so the signing key is kind of important i would pay attention here the signing key is important because it's the secret and if people actually found out your signing key you're going to be in a lot of trouble because then people can start issuing their own tokens. So swordfish, and I'm just gonna name it swordfish. I would name it, if you're gonna deploy this, I would name it something way more secure than swordfish. Swordfish is just kind of a demo or a dummy word for right now. So we've got, now we've got our issuer. Now what we want to do is we want to fill out a couple more things. So say validate audience and say true, true. Then go down here and this is where we're going to add the values from our app settings. So builder.configuration is equal to JWT, JWT audience. Okay, then we're going to go down. Now we're going to do our signing key. So validate issuer signing key, true. And this is where we're going to actually place our signing key. So here, and you need to use a form of encryption. So symmetric uh, security key. And we're going to go down. We need to convert it from bytes. So system text.encoding.utf8 and say get bytes. So it's going to convert it from the, I get what I'm guessing is a string inside of our builder configuration to bytes. So configuration and JWT. We're going to be reaching inside of our app settings and we are going to assign it the signing key. So signing key. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure look at everything one last time make sure that I have the app settings correct and it's a signing key yeah so signing key and I'm gonna make sure I spelled everything correctly okay and then the very last thing that we want to do is we want to go under HTTPS direction and we're going to say use authentication so we'll say use authentication and then we're going to say app dot use authorization so app dot use authorization Okay, and I think that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead here. What we want to do now is we want to use our .NET EF migrations and we want to add it uh, to our migrations. And we also want to do the database update. And this is what you want to have. You want to use .NET EF migrations add identity and then you want to do the database update and we will know the moment of truth. So we're going to go into here, fingers crossed that this works. 
holding my breath. So .NET EF migrations, add identity. Please work, please work. And looks like it works. So let's go ahead and do this, .NET EF database update. Please work, please work. Thank you, God. Whew. Okay, let's see. So go ahead, I'm inside of SQL Server Management Studio. We go to tables. Woo! Would you look at that? Got your, we've got our users, we've got our roles, we've got our logins, we've got our claims, and we've got our tokens. Everything is looking good to go. We can finally do our login. We can finally do our register. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and as always, thank you for watching.